Welcome to the online lecture of CSE 4551 Computer Graphics and Multimedia. Today's lecture topic is Lighting, Shading and Material Appearance. There is no part 1, part 2 of this lecture. This is a combined lecture. Uh, this will be a bit longer than the other lecture, so bear with it for a while. Uh, this lecture will discuss about how lighting and shading are handled in a graphics engine and how different types of materials affect the appearance of an object. From our physics knowledge of radiometry, we know about the different quantities related to light, uh, such as power, flux, spectral intensity, etc. Here we do not need to consider these things when rendering a virtual scene. <coughs> so the specific topics that we will not be discussing here are uh, directional quantities, uh, uh, the differences between the directional quantities and integrating overall uh, distance uh, directions then differential terms such as per solid light per solid angle or light per area and quantities like power intensity flux uh, these topics we just mentioned now play important role in producing vision in the real world but in case of rendering we do not need to consider these things so as to avoid complexity and to uh, make it more feasible for our system but one thing we do need to account for is color uh, which we can easily obtain by performing single wavelength computations for three separate channels. Uh, any kind of computations that we get for one single wavelength for a particular uh, channel such as R can be duplicated and the same formulas will apply for G and B separately. Only the amounts may vary and this will produce a particular color. Okay, then we move on to light the, the different kinds of light sources. Uh, we have all worked with 3D graphics softwares like Blender. And we have seen that in such softwares, there are mainly three kinds of light sources. Point light, directional light, and spotlight. In this lecture, we will mainly be discussing point light sources. Uh, but we will also be talking about directional light and spotlight. But we will not be going in depth with their formulas and representation. Remember that any discussion for a single light source also applies to multiple light sources, following the property of linearity. That is, if there are multiple light sources like A and B, then the intensity of both of them together will be basically the intensity of one plus the intensity of other. Similarly, if we want to scale a particular light source's intensity, then the intensity of the scaled source is equivalent to the scaling multiplied with the intensity of the original light source. So basically, linearity applies to light sources as well. And this allows us to use any kind of computation for a single light source uh, for uh, and apply it to multiple light sources. Okay. Uh, next, we we all know from the inverse law, uh, inverse square law of uh, electromagnetic radiation that the energy of a light source at any point is inversely proportional to the distance of the point from the source. Uh, this is being referred here as the one by r uh, r square fall off. The isotropic point lights will follow this law of radiation and by isotropic point lights we mean uh, those light sources which output constant power per solid angle in all directions. But like we said before, we will not be talking about quantities like power per solid angle so we do not need to measure this. But uh, we just need to know this particular behavior of this type of light source. Although in real life this is the law that is followed. For graphics this is implemented in a slightly <coughs> modified version. Because notice that 1 by r square uh, will become infinity when r tends to 0. That is, if an object gets too close to a light source, it will be illuminated with uh, infinite intensity. So the object's color will get over overwritten with the uh, light source's intensity and it will look almost white, no matter what color it is. So to, for this reason, a slightly modified version of the virtual implementation is used. Uh, and this is uh, this particular implementation instead of just r square we have a, uh, 1 by a r square plus b r plus c and in, if in case r becomes 0 even then there is a c uh, uh, constant component that gives us 1 by c so we never get infinite uh, okay but for our discussion uh, for the simplicity of our discussion let us assume that we are still using the 1 by r square for uh, uh, representation. Okay. Also, uh, 
We have already said before that the shading of a surface due to light is determined using the dot product with the surface normal. This basically signifies that the light intensity would be bigger at normal incidence. Uh, for example, directly perpendicular to the surface. And the intensity would have less contribution when it is at an angle. Like this. So you can actually match this scenario with how uh, the weather is brightest and hottest during the noon, uh, midday at 12 pm almost, and uh, when the uh, sun is directly above our head, or how winter or summer differences occur because of how the sun's rays reach the earth in different angles. So all this is to say that we will be using the dot product, basically the cos theta value uh, between the light ray and the uh, surface normal the light ray and the surface normal uh, to determine the intensity of light at some point on the surface. Now combining both the 1 by r square fall off like we talked about before and the dot product rule that we just discuss, uh, discussed now we will get the final representation of point lights as this. Uh, the light will be basically the original int uh, intensity of light times cos theta the whole thing divided by r square. Uh, notice that this uh, this is not theta by r square. I mean, this uh, divided by r square is not inside cos. This is basically the whole thing up to cos theta. I light by cos theta. The whole thing divided by r square. Uh, refer to the doc where it is written more clearly. Okay. Uh, next, we move on to directional lights. In case of directional lights, we can think of them as basically point lights that are infinitely far. If we consider fall off for such uh, lights, then they would basically have no intensity since they are at infinite distance away. I mean, if you use this formula for uh, directional lights, then since you are dividing by r square, this whole uh, component, if you are div uh, dividing by r square, and r is almost infinity because they are infinitely far away. So uh, it almost seems that their light would be zero. The intensity that would reach us would be zero. But it is not the case. Uh, this is a special kind of light, and Sim uh, this is basically the simulation of sun or some bright star far uh, in a solar system which uh, provides light to every other uh, planets in its vicinity. So that kind of light source is simulated using directional light. Their intensity is not uh, lessened by uh, using the formula 1 by r, uh, r square. Basically this particular thing will not be present there. Uh, we do not consider any fall off for them. Thus the representation is just like previous except uh, we do not have the fall of quantity 1 by r square. Uh, we have no multiplication with 1 by r square here. And next we move on to spotlights. Uh, in case of spotlights, we can consider them as point lights with non-uniform directional emission where the fall off is not only based on distance but also on the angular difference. There are two angles associated with spotlights. The hotspot angle and the fall off angle. The hotspot angle is the angle around the direction of light where there is no fall off. There is there will be a uniform intensity inside that angle. Yeah, for example, this particular cone, the, this particular angle, in this angle the light intensity would be uniform. Uh, and it would get reduced in, with distance using the 1 by r square fall off. But uh, in this angle there is no other fall off. But beyond this angle from after this angle up to here, this part, uh, that is the fall of angle and here uh, the intensity decreases exponentially. So and it gets to zero from uh, beyond this angle, it, uh, it starts decreasing and it gets to zero when it reaches this uh, boundary. So this is how the fall of angle and hotspot angles are defined. Uh, you can actually refer to this particular slide to see the different uh, geometrical terms associated with spotlights. But as we said before, we will not be discussing the uh, representation for formulas and representation for directional lights and spotlights. So these are not uh, the representation is not exactly important here. Now we move on to BRDF. BRDF stands for uh, bidirectional reflectance distribution function. It is basically a ratio of incoming light and the view directed reflected light. So, how much of the light is coming from the light source and how much is going towards the view, uh, viewer? This is basically determined by a function and this function is known as uh, BIDF. So, it forms a relation between the incoming light and how much of it will go in the direction of the viewer. And it can be expressed using four parameters. 
angle between the uh, surface normal and the incoming light that is theta i this is the angle between surface normal and the incoming light uh, then phi i this is basically the angle between the surface tangent and the projection of uh, incoming light on surface okay so this particular angle is the uh, phi i and angle between the surface normal and the view directed light this is the surface normal and this is the view directed light so this angle is theta o and the angle between the surface tangent if you uh, put the tangent along uh, uh, in this direction okay you are actually putting the tangent along this direction so, so you have to consider the angle from here you have to count the angle from here and th uh, this is the angle that will make when this particular view directed uh, vector is projected on the surface of the material then the angle that is made that is phi o this uh, we can actually define it using these four angles or a more simplistic method is to uh, compress the two uh, compress this into two parameters using two unit vectors that is the light direction unit vector and the view direction unit vector think of this vector as uh, l and this vector as v uh, then once this function fr is known uh, this fr function that is the bidf is known for a particular material we can uh, determine the view directed light using this particular equation that is uh, i out would be i in times the brdf function and this will be different for different uh, materials uh, for point light we can actually replace i in with the representation we discussed before that is i light cos theta by r square this is just uh, the final representation for uh, point lights now how do we get the fr function for different materials actually there are some instruments real life instruments for this which we will not discuss in our lecture one such instrument is the gonio reflectometer uh, you can actually refer to these two slides this is the gonio uh, a diagrammatic representation of the gonio reflectometer and uh, there is also another uh, contraption like this which can also uh, determine the uh, brdf function by taking various readings from different materials uh, any interested individual can uh, check out these things if uh, if they uh, if they want okay now, now we go back to this particular topic that is isotropic and anisotropic materials a material is said to be isotropic if rotation of the surface around the normal does not change reflection while l and v are fixed these are basically those materials which are uh, which have equal properties in all directions and that is the uh, micro geometry uh, micro geometry is not oriented in any particular direction examples of such materials are glass and metals uh, on the other hand a material that, uh, is said to be anisotropic if rotation of the surface around the normal changes the reflection even while l and v are fixed uh, these are materials with micro geometry oriented in a particular uh, direction examples of such materials are uh, wood hair velvet cloth and brushed metals uh, now we move on to the next topic that is uh, ideal ref uh, diffuse reflectors an ideal diffuse surface would be a very rough surface in the microscopic uh, level uh, in, in uh, realistic sense such surfaces must be very rough in order to have this kind of uh, lighting features uh, shading features uh, examples of such surface is uh, paper, chalk, cl uh, clay, paint, or concrete wall. Such surfaces reflect light in all directions from the point of incidence following Lambert's cosine law. Uh, wherever the light falls, actually, no, it's not just reflected in one particular direction, it is uh, diffused in many different directions. That is why it looks like this. It's not shiny like a mirror. And notice that this is not uh, shiny like a mirror. Uh, this is the same as when you look at your wall your the wall in your room is also will also be looking like this that is because it's a diffuse surface not a shiny reflective surface not a specular surface which we will move, uh, come later on uh, the specular surface is uh, uh, complete the opposite of uh, diffuse surface okay uh, such uh, surfaces like this uh, as we have said before follows the lambert's cosine law 
it is not necessary for uh, for us to know how the lambert's cosine law works we just need to know that uh, what the brdf for such a surface would be like so the brdf for each diffuse surface is a constant depending on the material and this constant is given as rho by r where rho is known as the uh, albedo this is a uh, coefficient between 0 and 1 uh, which says that how much of the fraction is reflected how much of the light that comes is reflected uh, this is combined into a diffuse coefficient kd where we take the dot product with the normal as well as multiply with the color value of the material so putting it all together for a single point light source we will have this particular uh, formula for the final uh, how much gets uh, reflected this is basically kd times max of 0 comma n dot l n is the normal here l is the light direction uh, vector here and their cost uh, their dot product and we are taking max times li times r, uh, by r square this particular part we already know how it came for point light sources and we also know why we are taking this uh, dot product but uh, the reason we use the max operation here is to clamp the dot product value to zero so that we do not get any negative value for this part uh, since that would be analogous to calculating the dot product with the negative normal which is inside the surface if you think about this uh, if the normal goes in this way uh, if the surface is like this the normal go, uh, goes along this way the inside of the surface here there is another normal which goes towards the inside of the so, uh, mesh so we should not use that particular normal we should only use this particular normal so that is why when we uh, calculate the n dot l we keep it uh, we clamp it to zero so that the ba uh, basically all the light calculations uh, that comes here is basically on this surface and not the inside of the surface not the negative of the, uh, of the normal no negative val uh, value total result is allowed here okay uh, next we move on to uh, uh, ideal spectral reflectance such type of reflectance occurs when the light ray is re uh, reflected in a mirror angle instead of multiple different directions as in for diffuse reflections we when we talk about diffuse uh, reflections every light ray that hits a diffuse surface gets reflected in multiple different uh, directions uh, following this law but in case of ideal specular reflectance uh, the light ray is reflected in a single mirror angle following a geometric uh, asymmetric angle so such type of reflectance is view dependent examples of materials uh, of such type of materials are mirrors and highly polished metals uh, you can actually see this slide this looks very uh, familiar it shows how uh, how to determine the reflection vector r uh, we have already discussed this part in our previous lecture on ray tracing if you remember notice a subtle difference here though that is uh, we are using uh, the uh, L vector is reversed here. Previously, for uh, ray tracing, the L vector was coming in this direction. Now it is from here to here. Uh, so basically, for ray tracing, the uh, light, ray, light ray vector was from the light, from the light towards the material at which uh, the reflectance would occur. Uh, but here, for material reflectance, the light ray is from the surface towards the light source okay now we move on to non ideal reflectors as we have previously discussed for uh, before for ray tracing no substance in real life is perfectly reflective or refractive similar to that no real glossy material behaves like ideal mirror reflectors and they are not ideal diffuse surfaces either uh, real glossy materials are something in between combining the characteristics of both in different amounts for different materials this effect is simulated by a simple empirical reasoning uh, we expect that most of the light source uh, the most of the reflected light will go along the direction of the light source uh, of, of the actual mirror angle uh, but we also expect a portion of the reflected light to deviate and bounce in some other directions so basically this particular thing uh, simulates the ideal specular behavior and the other parts that are uh, bouncing up in different directions that simulates the 
uh, diffuse behavior so such distribution of the reflected light is known as a lobe uh, a specular lobe and actually this particular thing that we are talking about the uh, bouncing in different directions it actually signifies the mic uh, presence of microscopic surface variations on the surface all real objects we always have this kind of mi uh, microscopic surface variations and this is why we introduce this kind of uh, a small percentage of the reflected light is also bounced in some other directions to give it a kind of realistic feel some kind of uh, diffuseness uh, there are various ma uh, mathematical models that simulate this uh, non ideal reflectance behavior some of these are the form specular model uh the bling torrens variation of there is a, another variation of this uh, form specular model this is the bling torrens variation and there is another called the cook torrens uh, model but we will not be discussing all of those we will only be talking about the form specular model here okay the uh, in in case of the form specular model this model determines the amount of light reflected based on the angle alpha between the ideal reflection and the view direction v Uh, notice that this is the if this is the light source, this is the vector from uh, vector towards the light source that is L. Consider this as a unit vector by dividing them with the magnitudes. Uh, this is the unit vector suppose, and then the symmetric angle uh, this, uh, with the normal. If you uh, consider the symmetrically, there will be another uh, mirror, actual mirror that is R. And suppose your your eye is here or the camera is actually here. So this is V. The uh, The, uh, all of these are basically uh, unit vectors here okay and the form uh, specular model determines what would be seen at this point uh, of the sur uh, the surface what uh, what kind of reflection would be here based on this angle the uh, angular difference between the actual mirror ray and the view ray this is alpha here and uh, based on this it uh, it actually determines a model a particular equation or a particular formula for this and uh, this is basically uh, l not the final output would be ks times cos alpha here alpha as we have talked uh, said before this is the angle between the mirror ray and the view ray uh, to the power q times li by r squared here cos alpha can actually be replaced using v dot r because if these both of these are unit vectors then v dot r would basically be magnitude of v times magnitude of r times cos alpha right and magnitude of v is 1 magnitude of r is 1 so we only have cos alpha so cos alpha can actually be replaced using uh, v dot r and we know why we did this uh, this is to avoid any kind of uh, trigonometric functions inside our implementation everything is basically uh, dot product with vectors and we all know how easily uh, any graphics Processing unit can you uh, can perform dot products and matrix calculations very fast. This is why we basically converted this here. And ks here is the specular reflection coefficient, and q is the uh, specular exponent uh, reflection exponent. Uh, these are basically some tweakable uh, parameters. These values can be tweaked, and we can have different kinds of uh, behavior for different kinds of materials. And uh, the different kinds of distribution uh, that comes due to the different kinds of values for q keeping the other things constant suppose ks is constant for a particular material uh, tweaking q we can have different kinds of distributions uh, notice that alpha here can be from minus pi uh, pi by 2 to pi by 2 and we will have different values here due to the fact that suppose cos alpha is 0 then uh, cos alpha 0 uh, means 1 this is basically 1 one uh, and 1 means this particular thing you can uh, omit then L not is basically K S times L I by R square. So this particular uh, peak is K S uh, into L I by R square when alpha equals to zero. And for different values of alpha, we will get different uh, kinds of values. Keeping Q constant, we uh, will get different kinds of values for different kinds of uh, alpha. And similarly, if we change Q and then we keep changing alpha, then we will have a different kinds of uh, kinds of distribution for L not. for different kinds of uh, angles so this is how tweaking q can allow us to have different kinds of uh, reflectance values uh, for different kinds of at, at different angles so this is uh, the end of this lecture uh, thank you for your attention